Well, hey fans, welcome back to another movie review, and today we're talking about Civil War. So, before I get into my review, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, Movie Pass. So, Movie Pass is back and it's better than ever. It's a subscription based ticketing service, and I've been using it for a few months now, and I just think it's great. And they have this neat new black card, and it feels great, and it's very easy to use. And unlike your AMC A list, or your Regal Unlimited, you can use MoviePass at almost any theater. And it is very simple to use. They now go off of a points-based system, so you pay every month, and that will vary depending on uh, the market that you live in, and you'll get a certain amount of points to use for movies. And the price in terms of points for the movies varies depending on the day of the week that you go to the theater, the time of the showing, and how recently the movie has been released. So what you'll do is you'll go into the app, you'll click the movie that you want to see, unlock the card, and then pay. And you can also pick the online option for just a few more points if you don't want to wait in line. So again, thank you to MoviePass. So Civil War is a dystopian thriller written and directed by Alex Garland, starring Kirsten Dunst, Wagner Mora, Kaylee Spaney, Stephen McKinley Henderson, and a few other names. And it's set in a future where the United States has broken into several factions and all factions are in a civil war. You have the Western forces of California and Texas. You have the loyalist states. You have the Florida Alliance and the New People's Army. So basically the film follows a group of photojournalists and journalists. Uh, Kirsten Dunn, she portrays Lee Smith. She's the main photojournalist in the group. She tries to kind of train up this young girl who wants to be just like her, portrayed by Kaylee Spaney. Her name is Jessie. And they go on this road trip to interview the president during this civil war, knowing that the Western forces are moving in to take over the Loyalist State's territory. And it basically follows their interaction with all of these different military groups on their road trip. And I have to say, it, the film is fine. The film is fine. The film is not exactly what I wanted it to be. I think Alex Garland made a great anti-war film telling you the horrors of war, showing you why a civil war is bad on all fronts. Of course, there's the original civil war that the United States had and how a future one would just be tragic. And just seeing like these the soldiers get killed, you're not really sure who's on what side because all of the factions pretty much wear the exact same fatigues. And the only ones you could kind of make out, and this is towards the end of the film, are the Western forces because they have the two-star flag emblazoned on their uh, uniforms. I enjoyed that message that he was trying to send. I enjoyed the acting. You really want, in terms of like the thriller aspect, the scene of this movie that really sticks out, we all saw it in the trailers, the scene where Jesse Plemons shows up and he has on his red sunglasses and he's you know, got the guns pointed at these people. And he likes asking them, you know, so you're American. Well, what kind of American are you? That is the scene that made this whole movie. It is fantastic. I wish Jesse Plemons was in it more because for I would give him an Oscar nomination for this one scene alone. He's such a fantastic actor. The tension in that scene is just fantastic. His dialogue delivery, everything about it just had me on the edge of my seat. And I wish the entire film was like that because I wanted to know more about what caused this civil war and like why are no, I just really wanted more information about the civil war. Like I said, you don't really know whose side you should be on. And it, it has nothing to do with today's modern politics. They don't mention anything about Republicans or Democrats or anything like that. You don't see any specific colors. You just know these forces are at war. And when even asked about it in the film, they're like, this guy's trying to kill me. I'm trying to kill him. They just kind of brush it off like that. And I do, like I said before, I think that is kind of the point of how silly some wars are over like the smallest thing. I really... Secondly, you know, after Jesse Plemons, his wife, and or I should say her husband, uh, Kirsten Dunst was great as Lee Smith. She's this battle-hardened photojournalist, no emotion on her face throughout much of the movie. The few scenes where she do smile, it does stand out because she's seen it all. You even see her have memories of all the wars that she's photographed. You see, she's seen people be shot for no reason, burned alive, whole buildings blown up. And even in the beginning of the film, when she meets Jesse, this girl just got smacked in the face with a club by a cop and she just saves her and says, here, take this jacket, you'll need this. And she's against her being on this whole trip because she knows what could happen and how dangerous their job really is. But 
when this girl says this is what she wants to do, they let her in. Wagner Murray as Joel, he is the, they don't really say what type of journalist he is. I don't really see him taking pictures in the movie, but his whole goal, he's going to be the one who actually interviews the president if they get the chance to. And he's great. You know, he's a little bit more loose, a little bit more cocky. He is a little bit more free in this movie. And I just, he was like the comic relief. And I really enjoyed him. You got the elder statesman and uh, Sammy, played by Stephen McKinley. Henderson, he is the one, like her, they, th they think the girl just too young to be on the trip. And they also think that he's too old to be on the trip. He knows he's old, but he's like, what else am I going to do? I want to be there if you guys are making this trip. And I really did enjoy his performance overall. The sound was fine. The use of silence was great. Like there's a scene where there's an explosion and afterwards, but you can't really hear anything, but when they take pictures, you can hear the camera clicks. So I like that whole aspect. Like there was a couple in a couple rows ahead of me. They came into the theater late. So after the explosion, they're like, oh, is the sound broken? Well, that's upsetting. And of course, eventually they heard the camera clicks. And I, I just thought that was hilarious. I'm not sure if this will be like an Oscar contention film, except for Jesse Plymouth's role, which I think is too short to even get a nomination. But if they could squeeze somebody in there, I would shoot him in for a supporting actor nomination. And I'm sure he'd get the nomination. Maybe not get the win, but he would definitely get the nomination. I think the major issue with the movie is that if you actually start to think about it, it indeed, it, it just falls apart. The plot is paper thin. Their journey across the country, it just opens up a lot of questions. Like there are some neighborhoods and towns that are perfectly fine. You have other neighborhoods. There's like random buildings on fire and things are exploded. And people are, you know, sleeping in like football stadiums when like right down the road, there are tons of just houses there for people to stay in. So like there's a lot of questions about this world that just were off to me. It didn't make sense. Like how these people are displaced when there's like a lot of free real estate for them to be living in. Even some characters mentioned, oh, my dad's on his farm in Missouri pretending none of this is happening. Like how is that possible? How are some people able to pretend it's not happening yet other people are severely displaced? And I know America is a big country, but like I, I just don't understand how a lot of it works. Like how the separatist states even have this much military power. And another way they could have explained this away, and I know this review is getting really long, but they should have set a time period for this movie. Everything seems like it's like a modern day, like an alternate present. If they had set this in like at least like a hundred years in the future, if they had dated it then and put some futuristic stuff here and there, not like crazy futuristic, just like, you know, some solar power stuff, or whatever. I think that also would have helped the film out. And I am going to get into a little bit of spoilers here moving forward. So in terms of a score, I'm going to give the movie a decent 7.2 out of 10. I think that's where I will sit this film. Like I said, I really want it to be better. But I'm moving into spoilers. So now that you've heard my score, if you want to dip out, you can dip out. So the movie falls apart when you start to think about it because it's like the United States has no allies. We've split up into all these factions, but we're only fighting each other. No, we, there's no mention of any other country helping us. There is mention of Canada in terms of currency exchange, but nothing about, you know, Canada coming in and helping a certain faction. The president played by Nick Offerman, he's not really in it a lot and he's not portraying like any president that we know, like he's not doing a voice, he's just being Nick Offerman. It does state that he's in his third term, so we don't know if that was the cause of the Civil War, if he would not get out of the office, so to speak, or if he's in his third term because the Civil War started and the state split up and that's just what that, you know, the loyalist states decided to do. And none of that is really explained. And when they actually get towards the end of the film, a thing with the photojournalists, they're like neutrals. They're accepted by everybody. So it's strange to see like, like which military faction are they taking pictures with now that they're just letting them do that. They're not really getting any threats from anybody. And at the end, they end up meeting up with some other photojournalists who are with the Western forces. And they're all from different parts of, you know, the country. Somebody's from Missouri, somebody's from Florida, somebody's from Colorado, which a couple of those are in different factions. But it really does seem, and it's not explained, that the Western forces might be the good guys because they're the ones going after the president. So when they actually finally get to the White House and kill him, you do kind of have some second thoughts because they're just killing people. They're not really taking hostages. Even when the president's, you know, people say, hey, he gives up. He wants to be taken as a hostage. Let's go somewhere neutral. They're like, nah, we're basically going to kill him. So there's that whole aspect. And the aspect, and this aspect, where they go and capture him, they shoot him right in the Oval Office. That doesn't make any sense. You know how many escape routes are in the White House? 
that would never happen. I think they do part of that just to kind of show you this isn't real. Like you have Texas and California teaming up. This whole thing isn't real. The situation isn't real. It wouldn't even go down this way, even if there were a civil war. So I understand that, but I kind of wish he had put a little more into the backstory of why this war is going on, even if it was with heavy exposition dumps by the main cast. I think that would have helped this film out tremendously. Also, so at the end of the movie, the character of Lee is shot and killed. And it harkens back to this conversation that she had with Jesse in the beginning about, you know, in my final moments, man, make sure you get it on camera. I thought that entire scene would have been more important, more poignant, more tragic if it was actually Jesse who had died and Lee was taking her picture. And that's just my thoughts on how that character and that ending took place. I'd like to thank you guys for joining me for this movie review. Remember, you can watch us on YouTube and the website, flickfrogllc.com slash flickfrog. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit. And please, pretty please, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll be seeing you.